What at first looks like AI magic, very often when you talk to scientists, turns out to be well-formulated uh, solutions to uh, mathematical problems and uh, theory of relativity problems. I have been trying to wrap my head around the stochastic um, solutions, uh, but uh, apparently I just need to listen to the presentation by our next wonderful speaker to figure out the Monje Kantorovich problems. Please welcome head of uh, research team at IRI and school tech professor Yevgeny Burnaev. His topic is from stochastic differential equations to the Monje Kantorovich problem and back the path to artificial intelligence. Hello. The topic of my presentation is a bit provocative. What is the connection between the AI, Monte Kantorovich problem, and stochastic differential equations? Let's figure it out. As a matter of fact, an important property of AI that AI should have and that people do have is creativity the ability to create. These are images generated by an AI-based model. They conform to the text prompt from a human. Mathematically, the problem of creating new images could be described as the problem of building a distribution model for different types of data, text, image, sound, and, of course, being able to model connections between these uh, types of data. One of the first models of this kind emerged in 2014. It was a uh, GAN model, a generative adversarial network model. The structure is simple. A neural network, a trained neural network, receives as input white Gaussian noise and then generates an object that was not present in the training data set. These models kicked off the modern development of generative adversarial networks. The next milestone in their development was a diffusion model, which also allows generating new images. So it has a certain degree of creativity. On the slide, you can see a special process, adversarial process, and a model that out of white noise generates an image in accordance with the text prompt through the text input from a human user. Behind all these results, there is a lot of fundamental tools and theories which were first put forward by our compatriot, a big mathematician of the 20th century, Andrei Kolmogorov. And today in my presentation, I wanted to talk to you about the uh, relations between uh, the different GAN models and their principles and how it all works. So the plan of my presentation is as follows. I will start with diffusion models. I will tell you how they are built. Uh, then I will talk about optimal transport models. Basically, optimal transport-based models is a more um, strict formalization of um, adversarial network models. And then I will talk about the Schrodinger bridge, uh, which is a sort of a bridge between the two polarities with the two poles of these models. But first, first things first, diffusion models. A diffusion model is based on a stochastic differential equation you have an initial distribution out of which a starting point is generated, the starting point of a characteristic. Then the stochastic differential equation determines how that characteristic evolves over time. This characteristic uh, transformation consists of two parts. The first part is uh, the trend which this part acquires over a certain uh, period of time. And the second part is the stochastic part uh, set by the 
И вот это вот... Броун мотион. So this equation determines the evolution of a characteristic. Of course, it can also be described in multi-dimensions. Experimental science knows that uh, for a forward diffusion equation, uh, you can have a backward diffusion equation. Uh, you can see it on the slide. But uh, instead of technical details, let's talk about the qualitative part of it. Let's assume we have uh, initial, an initial distribution of diffusion values. Uh, for example, as we have on this image, there are several uh, nodes, several peaks of this initial distribution. And then uh, out of this initial distribution, we launch a diffusion, a preset diffusion set by a specific equation. And then as it evolves, as that diffusion evolves, its trajectory reaches a point which is uh, pretty simple for, for example, a, uh, a Gaussian equation. What is backward diffusion? We generate the initial uh, diffusion process out of this uh, uh, simple distribution, for example, the Gaussian one. And then the evolution of this uh, diffusion process is set by this uh, a more sophisticated equation, which is related to the forward equation, the evolution is such that over time the value of this diffusion will meet with the sophisticated distribution that I talked about, as, uh, that I talked about earlier. Uh, what is its application in practice? It has a, a direct relation to practice. Let's assume we have um, uh, some set of images out of the initial distribution. If we build a diffusion which essentially can take a, 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 an image out of that set and add noise to it uh, sequentially uh, by iteration. As a result, we get uh, an image with white Gaussian noise. If we have that, we can launch the back, backward diffusion, which starts with the image with the white noise. And then, after a number of, of, of iterations, we will have an image that conforms to an image from the real world. Uh, of course, uh, if factoring in the semantics that was present in the training data set. Essentially, we need two steps. Step one, we build a diffusion, which uh, pretty efficiently adds noise to, to, an, to any image from the training set. For example, it acts according to the equation uh, that you see in the top right uh, corner of the slide. Step two, we launch a backward diffusion, which takes an image that is simply white noise and then transforms it into the initial image, similar to the ones we have in real life. The main difficulty here is that we need somehow be able to evaluate uh, the the image diffusion a uh, density logarithmic gradient. Of course, this variable is unknown in practice. And even in simpler processes, uh, it's not easy to calculate it uh, clearly. But this is exactly where we can use the neural networks. Previously, these fundamental results were, were known, but we did not have the computational power. But now we have this wonderful idea of a uh, marrying the fundamental results with the technology that we have now. And with the neural networks, we can approximate the gradient of uh, the density logarithm with the score function. Uh, the, uh, we use the neural network parameters. What do we have as a result? So we have the images from the real world, and we can add noise to it through diffusion. Second, we train the neural network, and we get a generative model which takes any white noise and after a certain number of iterations it can transform it into an image from the real world uh, but with non-existent images. Fundamental results are also needed in order to determine the criteria that we can use uh, to evaluate the data set. Using the uh, uh, neural network parameters, we can then fine-tune this uh, neural network for it to be able to produce this generation. And it will also be all, uh, able to approximate 
uh, the uh, red uh, element that is here on the slide. Now, obviously, there's a lot of other things under the hood. Everything is done in real time that I've shown here. And to make sure that we can uh, work in discrete time, you need to discrete all these formulas properly. That's a separate discussion. Now the results that we achieve are absolutely fantastic. We have never achieved that. And obviously, there's a lot of other engineering tweaks here because you need to make these generations in latent, latent uh, environment to get a better quality pictures, but you, you need to do a lot of other things to resi to resu have the results that you, we're seeing right now. But anyway, it is uh, possible. Now, talking about the optimal transport. Now, the Monj Kantorovich problem, the uh, problem of optimal transport was uh, developed by a mathematician, Monj. Now, there are two uh, probability distributions, P and Q. And you need to find uh, the uh, transport uh, representation where one distribution is being transferred to another uh, tr uh, distribution, P is to be transferred to the Q, to make sure that uh, this uh, representation is as simple as possible. Now, it, here we see the functionality that measures that. and. The optimal transport representation, that's basically the solution. And if you look at that, that's a strict mathematical problem setting for building the generative uh, network like GAN. Uh, this T representation is a generator that is taking one uh, distribution and transfer it to another distribution, and for instance, the distribution that we want to receive, like the distribution of the images. Kantorovich is a Soviet uh, economist and mathematician. He was one of the founding fathers of uh, the uh, linear programming and linear coding. Now, we're talking about uh, not only the optimal uh, transport problem, but the uh, um, we're making sure that the it's uh, continuous. P are some images, for example, and Q are some images as well. So we have some selections from these uh, samples. And based on the data from these selections, we need to build a uh, continuous T representation. That would make sure that any point from the P distribution like we're talking about the new point of X, uh, it should be transferred to the Y point uh, as if it was uh, generated by the Q. And it is possible to do it out of sample calculations, like any point can be transferred to another point of another uh, distribution. Now, what is uh, the problem of the optimal transport that I talked about? Now, this is a uh, weak optimal transport extension. And the, uh, I'm talking about the following. Instead of taking one point of uh, X distribution, instead of taking it from the, uh, from the other distribution, we are making a conditional uh, distribution, P from e Y, for X distribution. So we are going to have uh, some images from the second distribution that are being conditioned uh, uh, by the image from the first distribution. I'm going to give you some simple example that would give, uh, explain to you why we need that in practice. Now, in line with that, the price function is going to be changed, of course, and now we are measuring um, uh, the um, extent that X image is uh, similar to the Y images that could have been generated from the conditional uh, distribution from the X point based on the distribution that we want to build. And then we're going to distribute that and optimize that. Now, the typical example of the uh, optimal transport price a uh, cost uh, is the same, uh, almost the same as I've shown you. This is the quadratic uh, cost. Um, 
we do not want uh, the Y and X images to differ that much. On the other hand, uh, we need var some variance, and we add this, the uh, the summoned, and uh, the dis that means that the distribution that we want to build. Uh, like if this, uh, if we find this p conditional p, it will generate a lot of y's that will resemble the x, but they will be slightly different. And uh, this uh, difference is uh, calculated by this gamma. Um, now we have this uh, cost, the average cost, like it's on the slide, and we want to optimize it in some way based on some conditional distributions. And obviously here we have the algorithmic question. How do you uh, set this uh, conditional distribution? Because we're going to have some, de some d difficult data like uh, sounds or even images. Uh, some images uh, can have a lot of uh, pic pixels if it's a high-res picture. So high-res image, uh, how do you uh, make sure that the optimization is possible and that you can generate efficiently? Now, the answer is simple. The generators, the good old generators, that as we see in GANs, we have a T generator on the slide. And it inputs two things, uh, like the image, the X image, uh, on which you want, we want to build conditions on. And the second argument of this uh, GAN generator is some noise. Like in GANs, we see noise. The same will be here. It will make sure that the GAN will generate the images that will be uh, different for the different uh, at, uh, values of the noise. And on the other hand, that will be conditioned by the X that is within the GAN uh, sent to the input of the GAN. And it is a uh, non, it is called implicit modeling. So using this generator, we can basically generate images if as if we had some conditional distribution. This is how we do it. Now for this GAN, we're going to use an NN, and that is a very vol voluminous thing, like the NNs, and they can model uh, complicated sets of data, types of data even. Now. There will be another example at the end of the presentation that is kind of an industry-based example. Now we have a selection of uh, uh, the pictures of real faces as if they were generated by some distribution. And there is a uh, multiple, multiple of uh, anime-like uh, faces as if they were generated by the Q distribution. Obviously, uh, there is uh, no connection here. That is obvious, but we would like to make sure that a, uh, a real person is kind of uh, kind of coincides with the anime uh, style um, faces. Uh, we want to have uh, some um, uh, facial expressions that will be saved, but there should be some uh, variability because we do not have the um, any pairs here, so these real photos do not coincide with the anime photos, so obviously different artists see real faces differently and they can therefore paint different anime um, faces. So we want to use the generator to generate a lot of anime style uh, faces, but we want to have the same semantics and facial expressions that will be saved and that will be in line with the real photos. Now this is how we can do it with the uh, weak optimal transport that I'm talking about. This is a mathematical task. Now under the hood we, there is a uh, there's some mathematics that is very complicated. 
we have it on the slide, the summary of that on the slide. The um, optimal transport uh, problem can be reformulated with the uh, two-side uh, problem. Uh, that uh, is um, kind of uh, the same as in criteria we see in GANs, but there the are no limitations that we have in GANs for, discrimina for discrimination. And anyway, the fundamental maths give uh, us uh, the uh, proper um, uh, optimization criteria, and you can understand where does every element come from and how do you fine-tune it. And obviously there are some theoretical restrictions and underpinnings and we can understand what is happening in practice. Now let's look how it works. On the left-hand side, on the upper corner, you see the um, result. When a photo of a real person is transferred to the anime-style um, image, the uh, thematics, the semantics is pretty good, but this is a non-pair uh, semantical problem that we are solving right now. I mean, there can be no uh, pairs here. Uh, then we see the landscape that is transferred to a kind of a temple here. The temple should be kind of included in the uh, landscape. Um, and on the right-hand side, we see the uh, uh, the same. So type picture, like uh, the bank uh, photos can be transferred to uh, photos of um, uh, different style shoes. Uh, for the same handbag, we can uh, generate uh, the uh, shoes that would be in different styles, uh, but with, diff and with, with different uh, noise values. And this is what we wanted to achieve, basically. And this is this is how it works. This is a GIF animated image for different textures. We generate different types of handbags, but with different um, texture. Now, the same, but for the anime um, faces, the uh, hair style is changing, the form of the face is changing, yet the expressions, uh, facial expressions are the same. And in the lower part of the screen, it's uh, the same example, but with the landscape and the temple. Now we see that the optimal transport can help to s put stri a strict uh, task for a GN model. And uh, here you can have some new attributes as well. Now these two worlds of uh, diffusion models and uh, GAN-based models, how, how are they connected? Now, there is a theoretical structure, which is called Schrodinger Bridge. This is not a bridge that exists or does not exist. This is a very specific mathematical structure construct that I'm going to talk about later. And before I dive into that, I'm going to talk about optimal transport for a little bit. Now, I've talked about the optimal transport where the cost uh, element it has two summons. summons uh, the uh, the photos should be um, the same. Uh, after the tr transition, translation, the second element is that um, there will be some, vari some variance uh, that is going to be delivered by our generator. You can have the same fine here um, with the entropic optimal transport. The uh, entropic uh, character uh, with the conditional distribution should be quite large. Mm, now the fine, uh, the uh, in, entro in uh, entropy, uh, the fine is you know more or less the same. And this is quite an efficient solution in the. Um, case that we are looking at, the continuous case we are looking at, and uh, this is the approach that should be used for all AI-related problems. This is a big problem. Since we have entropic character here, uh, it's very hard to calculate the regularization effect, and uh, this is why there are no efficient algorithms that can be used up front here. Now about the Schrodinger bridges. Uh, these bridges are existent. Uh, the problem is as follows. We want to build a diffusion process in which we can manage the, uh, this, uh, this metric, this coefficient, 
We will be fine-tuning it later. We want this diffusion process to start with the distribution P at uh, the zero point in time, and uh, by the final point in time 1, between 0 and 1, the value of the stochastic process should be distributed uh, in strict accordance with the Q distribution. We go from P distribution to Q distribution. This is a strict requirement, and we can build many processes around it. We want to find the one where the norm, the quadratic norm of the uh, of that coefficient, is minimal. We don't want the trend of this process to be too big locally. Uh, so between the entropic optimal transport problem and the um, Schrodinger bridge, there is uh, a link. If you can build a Schrodinger bridge which goes from P distribution to Q distribution and the volatility coefficient, the epsilon coefficient, uh, with the Brownian motion is uh, exactly epsilon, the merged distribution of the start and final values of this diffusion produce the optimal transport plan for the optimal transport problem with the entropic regularization. So if you solve the Schrodinger bridge problem this way, uh, by extension, you have solved the optimal transport problem with entropic regularization. So there is this mutually unanimous uh, link between the two problems. And uh, just a couple of words about this slide in general. We can show that in order to solve the problem of building a diffusion process for the Schrodinger bridge, which goes from P, from, from P distribution to Q distribution, we need to solve the minimax uh, problem, the reformulation problem, where there is an additional discriminator, as usual for GANs. This discriminator guarantees that we will leave distribution P and we will definitely get to the Q distribution. And uh, all the way, we will be minimizing this summoned that we need. Let's look at it in practice an industry-related problem of uh, increasing resolution. The resolution improvement problem, uh, in practice, very rarely, sometimes it's impossible, very rarely do we have the exact matches, the exact pairs of the same object, uh, low resolution or high re and high resolution pairs, in order for us to be able to Feed this into a model for it to analyze and predict. We don't. Know, that's not the case. Usually, we have a set of uh, images in uh, low resolution, and then another set of similar images in high resolution. So, what we want is to take a low resolution image and uh, transform it into a high resolution image, as if it was taken by a high resolution camera. So, this means high-resolution image distribution. We launch the Schrodinger bridge with the epsilon that equals zero or, or, or a super small value. Then we take an arbitrary image in a low resolution from the training set, from the test set, and then step by step, the diffusion process transforms it into a high-resolution image. The face is uh, roughly the same as we had with our initial image. And now let's uh, increase the variation. Epsilon now equals 1. Since this is a diffusion process, what it does is it takes the image, it adds noise, and then it removes the noise in order to get to the distribution we want. So we get to this image of, of a face, high resolution, similar to the initial one, but we see some differences. And it's high resolution, exactly as we wanted. If we significantly increase the epsilon, the variation, the process is similar, but there is a lot more noise at the beginning, and then it um, the noise is removed very fast. So the high resolution face is um, indeed high resolution, but it is way different from the initial one. So the the problem is uh, improperly conditioned. Uh, Perhaps 
this high resolution face matches this face in low resolution, maybe it's something else. We do not know this. Of course, we do need to have some variation. But with the epsilon parameter, we can control the variation depending on the result we want to get. Another example, uh, a small piece of animation for you to be able to uh, keep track of how the faces are changing. Uh, the image on, on the left is epsilon equals 1, so the variation is low, and uh, on the right the epsilon is 10. It is very high variation. The image in low resolution transforms into a high resolution image, and the faces look similar but the resolution is way higher. And in this case, the, the, the face is uh, radically different. And we have observed this effect uh, in many different examples. In conclusion, the examples that I provided show the link between the different fundamental methods where these formulations are used in uh, different algorithms uh, that, uh, uh, that are used in uh, different neural uh, generative neural networks. We, this is very important. We can study the theoretical methods, which means we can have some guarantees. You know, we can safely say that uh, AI-based systems work this way or another, and we know the reasons why. And stochastic methods are useful in generative models. So maybe we could produce more fundamental results. We could I involve some more fundamental results in order to use it even more efficiently in generative models. Also, thanks to these fundamental results and the fundamental studies, we can analyze why GANs need to be built one way or another. Using optimal transport, for example, we can uh, rid ourselves from a lot of empirical solutions which are frequent in GANs and which impede their training. These are the results that I was talking about. They are based, as I said, on a large number of publications, uh, our publications in particular. And of course, we couldn't do this without this uh, amazing team. A shout out to all our team members, led by Alexander Karotin, wonderful specialists, wonderful experts. They helped to build the theoretic base for it. If you're interested, I have included uh, these QR codes for you to uh, browse through the scientific papers. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. I'm ready for your questions. Thank you very much, Evgeny, for this deep dive into the mathematical space. We have uh, had, I hope the space was not too deep. Well, we have some questions for you, lots of questions, actually. Unfortunately, there's only time for a few of them. Is it possible in solving this problem to decrease the dimensions of uh, uh, the image? Let me comment it this way. With some of the optimal transport problems, we solved some of them in latent space, which means we could work with images of higher resolution. So you can add the modeling of uh, mm, uh, many folds. And uh, yes, this, this can increase uh, the dimensions and the variation. Which uh, key mathematical uh, theories, in addition to Monja Kontorovich and Kolmogorov's works, were reflected in, in your studies, in your use cases? Well, this is a big question. In analyzing neural networks, we use a lot of uh, approximation studies uh, from Kolmogorov uh, and other nonlinear approximations. This is a big uh, section in uh, mathematics. Also, topological determination, uh, computational topology, uh, lots of things uh, just off the top of my head. The main message in my presentation is that it's important to build these bridges because uh, this this will allow you to, to build new algorithms with new properties. Do you think uh, these ideas of yours will also be included in these uh, big compilations of uh, scientific papers? Uh, we'll see. Thank you very much. That was Evgeny Burnaev uh, moving on.